Expedition Say Mud Runner game released their first game patch this week. I've also been receiving some very kind feedback on my recent Expedition videos that some of you enjoy my relaxing narration. So today I'm going to try combining the two and sharing the patch notes with you in a soothing, soft-spoken style with relaxing Expedition's gameplay in the background. If you like this style video and find it relaxing and calming, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, this might be a one-time event. Let's begin with a summary of the March 7th patch. The Expeditions team is currently prioritizing bug fixes and UI improvements as well as getting co-op mode ready to release. This week's patch rolled out to PC on March 7th and will port to consoles next week. There will be a second game patch in March, followed by a third in April. Now I will read you the official patch notes for Expeditions A Mud Runner game. Hello everyone! Expeditions A Mod Runner game has officially been out for two days and we would like to extend a huge thanks to all of you for the feedback received so far. Everyone in the team is on deck watching streams, videos, and reading your comments and reviews. We're happy to see so many of you enjoying Expeditions and what it's trying to achieve. Although we are also aware and understand that some of you aren't satisfied with the game's current state. Here are our current priorities. Some of your most recurrent feedback is about the UI. We cannot overhaul the user interface in one night, but this is a big focal point for the team right now, and it will be improving through several updates. Our first update releases with this message to bring some immediate improvements. We are also hard at work on bug reports and today's patch brings a lot of fixes based on your feedback. Be assured that we'll continue to squash as many technical issues as we can in the coming updates. We've also noticed many requests for a photo mode in Expeditions and we are glad to add it with today's update. It only needed a few extra days of cooking. Sounds delicious. What about the co-op mode? Well, we talked about this before launch. It will be added as a free update in the coming months as part of our regular updates to bring new content and features to the game. The same way we've supported SnowRunner after its release in 2020. Gosh, has it been four years already? Co-op is an important feature for both Mud Runner veterans and newcomers. That's why we want the multiplayer experience in Expeditions to feel as polished as possible, which means taking a few extra months. So please be patient. I had that part. About Expeditions content. Our intentions for Expeditions was to deliver the same amount of content as SnowRunner, but with a new approach with unpaved lands, access to new gadgets, and a focus on exploration. To date, Expeditions features 80 missions and over 120 side activities, spread across 9 different maps, located in 3 different regions. The game has over 30 square kilometers of drivable terrain, which is the same size as SnowRunner at its launch. On top of that, we are planning to add a lot of new content, missions, vehicles, tools, specialists, maps, and more. Let's hope they finally add the International Scout 800 they showed in the trailer. If you're curious to learn more, check out the Year Pass and Editions trailer on YouTube. Finally, for those of you worried about the future of SnowRunner, we want to be clear about the fact that Expeditions offers a different experience. It's centered on exploration, and it's not meant to replace SnowRunner in any way. Both games will receive updates, content, and fixes over the course of the year, and we hope you'll enjoy both for what they have to offer. The first update is out now on PC, and it will follow next week on consoles after going through first party certifications. You will find the patch notes below, but I'm going to read them to you. 
It's only the first in a long series of updates, so please keep the feedback coming. We can be found here on Steam, as well as on social media and Discord. See you soon for a new update. Signed, The Expeditions Team. And here are some of the most important aspects of the change list. First and foremost, we have a new feature with this patch. As mentioned before, there is a photo mode. So for those of you wanting to hide the user interface to take screenshots or just to feel more immersed in the game, you now have that option with the click of a button. This will immensely help those trying to take thumbnail photos for YouTube videos. As most of you know, I had quite a few issues doing that and it did not go well for my expedition while I was trying to get thumbnail pictures. Hopefully this will help to remedy that. Next, we have a handful of crashes that were fixed with this patch. First and foremost, the crash reporter itself was fixed. Kind of important if you wanna report crashes. There were some fixes related to interactions with the building modules, as well as using the echo sounder in the tutorial, as well as a crash happening when selling a module. In the art department, a bug was fixed where the ground texture had low graphical resolution. The issue was encountered on the first map of the Arizona region. There was a soapy landscape texture on ultra settings, for those of you rich boys with beefy PCs. I did not notice that. There are also some engine star animation fixes. To match the new sounds, one of the vehicles impacted is the Costco Canyon, also called the Costco. I didn't know Costco made deliveries, but apparently they do. Next, we have the UI fixes. A comment from players was taken into account when the map was not centered on the place where a player was to deploy to address the issue of player confusion when deploying far from the first quest point. The first car's deployment zone list will open immediately, so the camera will center on the car. Significant changes have been made to all car description variants. Now the information is structured to display truly important details for a player. Elements have a more comprehensible layout, both in terms of meaning and visual composition. Interactive elements have become more apparent. These modifications have affected all instances of displaying information about the car, including the garage, the truck store, and the map. Additionally, improvements have been made to the car card in the store, DLC content display has been added, and layout flaws have been corrected. Now, the card precisely shows the information that is crucial for a player when adding a car to their garage. A recommended label was added for the Little Colorado region. It's a sign for potato, I mean novice players, that they should start with the easier Little Colorado region and gradually move on to the main quests in Arizona and Carpathians. There was a problem with notification of the scanned area. It didn't disappear after using the radar. They fixed a bug where the notification that the zone had been scanned was left on the screen after using the radar. Previously, the notification could be cleared by re-entering the menu, and now the notification disappears correctly. There was also a problem with the movement between add-ons in the garage. It was blocked after returning from the codex. Now the controls are fixed and working as usual. Improvements were made to the layout of the pop-ups, completed quest, and new task. The interface now uses patterns defined on the HQ screens and gives a better understanding on rewards. Trucks, vehicle add-ons, base modules, and specialists are now properly displayed in the reward pop-ups of expeditions, contracts, and tasks. Previously, players have received these rewards as they should have been, but there was no mention of these rewards in the UI. Oh really? I didn't even notice. Within the HQ, it is now possible to open the inventory of the cars using the cursor, and there were several bugs fixed within the garage, such as the fuel quantity not changing after the measurement system was changed. If you have a vehicle in which sideboards cannot be installed, these are now disabled. 
the remaining space for gasoline calculates correctly in case of taking any car without a sideboard, installing it, and buying any amount of fuel. For those using the metal detector, there is now a treasure icon, so you can search for that booty. And in the tire inflation system screen, the D button can be clicked by the left mouse button. And finally, the truck engine can now be turned on and off on Xbox One and Xbox X. Oh wow, I didn't know that was a bug. On to the gameplay fixes. So upon exiting the HQ, all incomplete tasks and contracts will be reset. Previously, this led to soft locks. If a player returned to the HQ after completing a contract, task, or stage, with a unique item and then returned to the same map with new expeditions, the contract or task item would not respawn, so the player had to restart the contract or task manually. This has been addressed. There was also a problem where the Echo Sounder minigame was just too difficult, so they have added more attempts to complete this to simplify the quests. Some of you were using binoculars to discover new items and they were not displayed correctly on the map. This has been fixed. If you were like me and were noticing and missing the sweet, sweet honk of your car, that is now available and you can honk to your heart's desire. They fixed a sound with the drone's bad signal. The sound would start when a player was not far from the truck, and now a player can understand the signal status from the interface. They fixed an issue with the seismic vibrator sounds. I just made a video on that expedition. It was quite interesting, and I did notice it said there was supposed to be a sound as you were approaching the area to be scanned, and I never heard anything, so I'm guessing that's what they addressed. They also implemented a couple fixes to mini game cameras. For example, there was one where there were too many fireflies in the mini game at night. The firefly visual effects were displayed on the pictures taken by the player, and sometimes there were so many fireflies that they covered the entire scene. I did see a picture of this in the Steam community, and honestly, I thought it was amazing, and I'm sorry they fixed that but there are no longer giant clusters of fireflies. Within the economical system, there are issues that were fixed. For one, there were repeated installations of DLCs allowing players to endlessly receive money from the sale of DLC trucks. That's awesome, and I'm sorry I did not partake in that because now they have fixed it and you cannot exploit it anymore. Work in progress truck frame modules were available for purchase in the garage. Players were able to access the living and the workshop truck frame modules, even though they were not intended to be available. As a result, players could waste money on the workshop module without being able to install it. The living module didn't have any functionality, but was possible to buy and install, and now both frame modules are not available for purchase. They also blocked the purchase of add-ons on invalid modules. Finally, there are a few mod support and localization fixes, and the patch notes end with a notation that there are over 200 other minor fixes and improvements included in this patch. This concludes the first patch notes for Expeditions A Mudrunner game. What do you think of these patches? Personally, I appreciate that they addressed the elephant in the room of people being upset that Expeditions is dissimilar to SnowRunner. They expected a continuation of SnowRunner, and that's not what Expeditions is all about. It is shorter missions. It is science-based. There are no paved roads. You don't have the semis and the long hauls. You have gadgets. You don't have to use them, but they are there if you want to. And Expeditions is just a relaxing, calming, soothing experience for the most part, at least for me. I am anxious to hear what you think, not only of Expeditions, but this first update. What are you most excited about that is upcoming? And also, please let me know what you think of this type of video with relaxing narration of the patch notes. 
What can I improve on it? Do you not want to see another video like this again? It's okay, I can take it. If you like expeditions and other sim and survival games, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to be extra nice, leave a comment or a like down below. And I thank you for watching. I will see you next time.